Welcome back to the RV Solar Channel. And uh, as you can see, the solar bus is out and about with the solar trailer now. And we are doing another install here. We're hard at work over there. I'll show you what we got going on. So uh, stick around if you want to see how a Victron solar system gets installed into a uh, fifth wheel like that over there. My uh, trailer here, this is uh, something I've been working on for a while. Let's get the lights on. It's, uh, it's all a mess in part because it did not really survive the traveling the 300 miles here. Uh, so I just got to grab a couple of things out of here. My uh, trailer here, this is uh, something I've been working on for a while. Let's get the lights on. It's, uh, it's all a mess in part because it did not really survive the traveling the 300 miles here. Uh, so I just got to grab a couple of things out of here. Now, I know we said we weren't going to be doing any more of these, at least this year, but it's going to be 60 degrees today. We are in southern Wisconsin. Let's do one more, huh? And we might even do one more after that because <laughs> uh, you, you got to make hay when the sun shines, right? And it is shining. So let's see what we got going on here. Uh, as you can tell, this is day two of the project. We got our board coming together here and it's a corner board. This is where this customer wanted it. They wanted more of the storage space in front. So we're doing it in this uh, outdoor kitchen area. Still gonna have a TV over here and uh, probably even there's still a little bit of room for some storage, but you can uh, kind of show this area off too. So uh, <clears throat> 24 volt system and uh, one of the use cases was to run the air conditioner for a significant amount of time. So if that's the case, I really recommend 24. And you only got a couple of considerations as far as how to make that work in a system. And we'll go over that. It's not that bad. And it actually saves you money in the end. Uh, so it's a win-win-win, as they say. We got the... Uh, we're, running, oh, we're running two of the uh, MPPT 100 by 50s, the blue solars, they're a little bit cheaper. And when you're using a Cirbo, it I think it makes sense to do. And actually these just went on sale. They are super cheap right now. Uh, this is November, 2023. Uh, both of them are, they're, they're like half price. I don't know what's going on with the Victron. I'm guessing they're clearing out stock because new ones are gonna go on sale or something. Uh, we've got uh, breaker box here. I haven't ran my mains in yet. Got the Orion step-down converter. So this is part of what you gotta do. You take a 24 volt battery signal and uh, you output a uh, adjustable uh, 12 volt. In our case, usually it ends up being about 13.8, which is really consistent and uh, it works out pretty well. Got our shunt shut off, uh, the links, and uh, of course the lights are gonna work on that. You know how we do. And uh, yeah, I got a raceway here. Already got one of the mains connected. The AC mains rather. Just ran the uh, data cable, the uh, VE bus connection to the servo. Uh, let's take a look back here. All right, we don't have a ton of light back here. I'll show you what we got going on. So we've got three of these SOK 24 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. You can see how well those uh, nest together there. Then we've got a total of three Battleborn batteries we're gonna add in here as well. Two of which are gonna be wired in 24 volt uh, arrangement. And one of the uh, Battleborn batteries, so three of those total, one will be as kind of a 12 volt, um, almost a capacitor, I guess, but we're gonna leave it in line in the system to handle any spikes in 12 volt load. And that way they've also got emergency 12 volt power in case something happens with our system behind that wall. Got our transfer switch here and uh, got our solar wires here. This red and black is one. And then this other uh, white and red is the other one. Those are our two solar lines. I'm pretty sure I called Grand Design on that. We'll uh, talk about that more when we get up on the roof. 
and the utility panels back there. And then, uh, yeah, so these utility spaces are kind of nice, but they're a little bit of wasted space, so we're going to try and use some of that space here. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing we're going to do that's a little bit different is we're going to leverage customer had a previous Lynx power in. We're going to use that to combine all these batteries together rather than doing the typical uh, kind of daisy chain paralleling that we've done before. So that'll be a little bit different. And then, of course, with those two battleborn batteries we're using a battery balancer to keep those in balance that's critical that you do that if you're doing a higher voltage system with uh lower voltage batteries it's one of the reasons when we do a 24 I like to use a 24 volt battery but they had these batteries from an old system so we're gonna make it work well look at that it's uh it's nighttime already actually it's only about 5 30 but welcome to middle november here's how this uh Compartment is working out. We got a couple of things we got to do yet, but uh, this has really come together. Not a bad way to do it, I tell you what. So, got everything going in here. Just a quick tour of everything. Got both of our breakers hooked up. And those solar wires ended up being correct, the ones we talked about. Those work good. Uh, we do have all the panels up on top. Just not hooked up or anything. We'll be doing that tomorrow morning. And we've been charging the batteries. So we are in absorb now, so that's good. It means we're at about 28.8 volts, almost full. So, uh, yeah. We'll check in back with you in the morning and I'll sh show you what we did in the battery area too. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. We've got uh, 2,500 watts of solar going on here. Looking like a uh, Tetris level as they're all coming down, ready to get stacked up, right? That's one of the reasons why I like these smaller panels is because you got more options. We are incorporating the 300 watt panel that comes with it. <clears throat> and what we did was we just put that, uh, using it as a 200. So pairing that with one of these, it'll end up effectively being a 200 but um, it'll help out in uh, not great shade situations like we have now, or, you know, just not great uh, sun conditions like now. This is noon, and that's where the sun's at. Mid-November in the Midwest, this is, how, this is what it is. And uh, to that point, some people might ask, why would you really, do you really need this much solar? Do you really? And I would say yes, absolutely. Because as of right now, we're pulling in three to 500 watts. That's what we're actually able to capture in a condition like this. Now, if you just got 400 watts or whatever, or a thousand watts, you know, you do the math, you know, put it down below in the comments on how much that would be. It's just, uh, you can never go wrong with having too much solar. If your batteries are full, fine but when they're not, you need all you can get. So that's why I recommend doing this. Uh, the other thing I know you guys like when we do different things, we we'll share little tidbits of stuff. Uh, I've started putting a thin coat of Dicor underneath these 3M tabs, and I let it sit there for a good half hour to an hour, just a little, and it's just a light coating of Dicor. And what that does is it gives it enough time to skin over so it'll actually adhere <clears throat> to the 3M tab uh, or mounting mount there for the zip ties. And then we'll put some die core over top of it. And then over time, die core is actually is holding that down, not the, the 3M adhesive, because that just doesn't last on these roofs. You see uh, solar installs all the time where these are pulled up and they're not holding anymore. So that's what we do. But uh, yeah, I got it all hooked up, tested. I think we're ready to uh, secure it all down. And then uh, we'll be on the last stages here. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about is, this is pretty cool. This is the first grand design uh, that we've worked with where we've seen this. This is a 2024. So if this is uh, good things to come, I like it, grand design, keep it coming. Uh, that's a solar port. <laughs> And that's a solar port. And they both feed down into the front bay. Now we didn't use that front bay area connection, but 
that opens us up to running two trackers, which is great, two chargers, which is gonna get better performance, especially in partial shade conditions like this, where that panel is, you know, gonna be partially shaded almost all the time. Uh, that's gonna help out so much and it's just gonna open up options for people. So really like that grand design. I wish uh, more manufacturers would do that. Now, if that wasn't the case, uh, there is a satellite prep port here we could have used, uh, or we could have used uh, one of the vents here and ran down there, or just used a normal port, added one ourselves. But having that already done is huge. All right, everything's uh, screwed down. Got the die core on. We're looking good. Like to double check all of these. Got our uh, cords trimmed up and all that. I think we're in good shape here. Maybe we'll go pop down and uh, see exactly what kind of power we're pulling in. I gotta get my stuff down too. It's always fun. Well, welcome to the basement where I've been spending a lot of time. This is all the, this is actually a room. Here's outside. This is a compartment in this uh, Grand Design Solitude that is all open and you can definitely do a lot of fun stuff in here, but it is nice to have it open. So let's talk about some of the things we did in here. Um, so we got our Lynx power in and we've got all of, our, we got three SOK 24 volt batteries in here. And then we've got two Battleborn batteries put in series. And then to that is connected a Victron battery balancer to keep both of these batteries in balance on a 24 volt system. And that's really important. If you're going higher voltages, you got to use balancers. Then this one here, we connected directly into the 12 volt system of the coach. And that is coming from the output of the uh, Orion step down converter. And I've got a uh, fuse or not a fuse, a breaker on that. And that's where we connect all that to. And then this is just going to the ground lug on the, uh, whatever, the main DC distribution panel for the coach. Now, the other thing I want to mention is did a little, uh, little, uh, just improve life improvement thing here. We, uh, tapped into an open terminal on that distribution block there and we're running it to the back of the water bay for a 12 volt source. We'll uh, take a look at what we got going on there. So then over here, got a little SAE connector. That's got 12 volts on it all the time. So then the customer can run a couple different th things like a uh, macerator pump or uh, other things. So it's all kinds of stuff you can do. Now forgive the reflections here, but uh, we're making one change before we call this good here on the MultiPlus is we're doing the AC pu input control and we're setting this to a conditional AC input so that for the most part the system relies on solar. So what this means is if the load is ever higher than 2550 watts it will connect to shore and it'll disconnect if the lo load is lower than 1600 watts. And then uh, it will also connect when the SOC drops below 30% or if the battery goes below 23.5 volts. And then if any of those conditions happen, it will charge to 28 volts. And then it will disconnect and the cycle re will repeat. This is one way to save money if you're uh, uh, at a campground long term and you're paying for electricity. Full disclosure on this, we did end up reverting this because of some unintended consequences when using electric heating. However, this technique still can be used for this purpose. Um, you just want to consult your Victron professional on it. Well, I think uh, it's that time of the video here where we're about to wrap things up or actually things are wrapped up. Got everything loaded up and uh, been a lot of fun working on this. Again, uh, 2,500 watts of solar, 400 amp hours of battery because it's 24 volts. 
you know, I got the Victron Multi Plus in there and all that stuff. Um, if this is something you'd like done to your RV, something like that in there, uh, give us a call. Check us out on our website, sotasolar.com, S-O-T-A-S-O-L-A-R.com. Hit us up on email, text, uh, feel free to call, but uh, I might be on a roof like that, so I'm not going to be able to talk to you quite as easily. So uh, I would love to hear from you or leave a comment down below, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, catch you next time. Bye.